you have a choice. You either represent us or we're going to find a Democratic senator who does. We have tried to reach Senator Cinema more times than I can count. The communication has been cut off. There's no sense of accessibility. She won't stop blocking the Biden agenda, the Build Back Better agenda that uh, people need. And time after time, she has proven that she rather listened to her corporate donors than to listen to the people who walked in 110 degree heat to get her elected. numerous resolutions, one of them being full support of the PRO Act, which would be the largest worker reform policy in United States history in some time, support of the For the People Act, which is huge democracy reforms to help get big money out of politics, and the third was supporting the end of the filibuster. We thought that Cinema would listen. She ignored our voice as an executive board. The threat of no confidence came about when a, a group of, of activists, a group of members of the Democratic Party, people that worked on her campaign, we all came together, we all sat around a table and we said, we delivered a victory for Senator Sinema uh, to United States Senate, uh, and now she's not delivering on those promises. What do we do? She couldn't commit to a town hall, a public town hall, in front of voters. We uh, had a sit-in at her office, 10 people were arrested in a peaceful, nonviolent sit-in, and it didn't move her. Civil rights leaders like Jesse Jackson and Reverend Barber came out, and we had another huge march rally and sit in at her office where another 40 people were arrested. It still hasn't moved her at all. And when none of those were working, we said we need to take it to a next level. And so uh, part of that was delivering a message through the Democratic Party so that she would know that this wasn't just a small wing of, of Democrats, a small group of Democrats that were feeling this way, but this was the entire party. It was not difficult to get people on board. There are many people that are upset with Cinema's actions. The action when she voted no on the floor, and kind of the pose that she took there and, and the, the ring that she wore, basically sending us a very strong message herself. We all took that, I think, very personally. And then just the progression of things happening here in Arizona with what the Republican-led legislature is doing here. No hesitation whatsoever to, to become more and more radically extreme in the measures they're trying to push on us. We in May actually had our Republican governor sign on a law purging over 100,000 voters from our permanent early voting list. With 80% of our voters voting through this method, they effectively passed a civil rights voter suppression bill. Arizonans are struggling. They were struggling before this pandemic. We're at a point where we need federal action and uh, there's nothing happening there. I've known Kirsten since uh, 2005, 2006. She was an activist. She was a progressive voice in the state legislature for the first couple of years that she was there. And then slowly she started moving more conservative. Now she's beholding, I think, only to her big donors and not to the people of Arizona. I was expecting um, the Kirsten Cinema that I had seen in the state legislature. I was always very impressed by her intelligence, by her ag aggressiveness, and by her commitment to values that, that we supported. That's what I was hoping we would get, not only in Congress, but in the United States Senate, and she hasn't done that. So she's been really the exact opposite of what we thought we were electing. As many reporters say, she's an enigma, but maybe it's as simple as liking the money too much. Senator Sinema's decision to leave Washington, D.C. in the middle of heated debates on important policy that meets the moments is her peak let them eat cake moment. She returned to Arizona to answer to, I believe, five corporate PACs that she will sit down and conversation and have dinner over with expensive plates and wine, but she will never return or even meet her constituents through a Zoom meeting 
when we are the ones who elected her without a voter base she has no campaign and in Arizona folks it gets hot I don't see those corporate donors walking in 110 degrees knocking on doors to have these everyday conversations with the real voters to turn out and we're anticipating to really raise a lot of money to be used for a primary challenger in the future if we need to I think this has given her the choice it has put the ball in her court we did our job we got her to Congress now it's her turn to do the job we elected her to do. We want her to pass the agenda that the party has supported, that people who helped get her elected supported when she ran in 2018.